Today's theme is Humans 2.0, Designing and Implementing a Future-Proof Strategy. In the recent Brightline study, 59% of senior executives admit that their organizations struggle to bridge the gap between strategy and implementation. It's easy, of course, to be enamored with new strategies and great new technologies, but it's, more, it's, it's much more important to recognize that all strategic change is implemented through action plans and projects themselves. What we see today is an absolutely massive development of technology. We move technology at the lightning speed, at the lightning speed. Computers are faster, AI, VR, everything is moving, but are the humans moving at the same speed? Now, when we speak about the future of work, you have to understand really what kind of mega trends are hitting our workforce. Number one is shifts in technology and digital productivity. So automation, AI, robotics, analytics, number two, uh, data, uh, access, access to people, etc. So the first three things are all about digital and this is probably the mega trend of mega trends. And finally, People are looking for purpose, so purpose and well-being. You don't work only for money, only to get dividends, but you work also because you want to accomplish something and bring everybody together. So as leaders, I think it's really important that we show them, we show everyone where we're going and we take everybody with us as well. I think that what people are actually thinking is that they need to actually keep themselves broad and they need to be continually learning. People are going to have to get used to training their whole life. You're not going to train for one job and stay with that. It's going to be this continuous learning. And we need to think how we're going to deal with that, both as employers and also as a society. So how, how on earth do you recruit people based on their potential rather than their CV? Each time you, feel you, you have exactly the same picture, three, five years of experience diploma or qualification, and nothing about talent or potential, collaborative, creative, sometimes uh, team spirit or not, depending on the job you will apply. But today, when we, you, you, you recruit through a resume, you don't see anything, and that's the point. We asked 366,000 job seekers where they would like to work, what is important for their job, what kind of job preference they have. The top three had something to do with culture, Number one was relationship to colleagues. Number two was work-life balance. And number three was relationship to the boss. So one and three is the microclimate. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore also in recruiting, you have to, uh, at, let's say, offer a personal touch because people will want to see how you work in your company. Yeah. Number four actually was, what are my training opportunities? And number five, what are my career opportunities in this area? I believe it's somewhere between 8% and 13% of the workforce are actually engaged, which means 87% <coughs> at best aren't. I mean, that's a really... Then we would even say some are disengaged yeah. and some are even actively disengaged, disengaged, which are disengaging others. Engagement is highly critical for success as an individual and as for, in, for companies and organizations. So what I found to be interesting is the continuous learning aspects that are required in the future and how, how engaging that is by definition. So that there's a huge gap that needs to be filled. That's about us as leaders in these businesses. So I think that personal responsibility we have to take on board. I do have a question around, you were talking about purpose-driven companies and there's this shift. How do companies prepare for that and work every day? I, I think the important thing is that you, you shouldn't do something that doesn't fit with the core business of your company. Um, you, you need to do something that's sustainable. And so therefore you have to identify what business am I in? What value can I bring to the world? What impact can I make with that? And interestingly, I, um, I was in Israel recently and I was talking to Sir Ronald Cohn and he is a firm believer that businesses are just not going to be measured by their bottom line, but also by the social impact they bring. And it will be a measure and it may be combined. Um, and that a business that's you know generating 10 billion a year but having no impact or negative impact is not going to be worth as much as a business generating 10 billion a year, but having that positive social impact.